phone go? Because my Discord might be screaming at me. I'm just going to keep my Discord open at least. Alright, uh, it's the same day, I don't even know what day we, this is at all, uh, same day, unspecified time, Madam Rosax. Oh, what? It's like, this is like a reenactment place or something. What, what the heck is this? These terrifying scenes. They're not moving at all, though. A guillotine. Serial killers. I feel like I'm gonna have nightmares about this stuff tonight. All of these are wax figures. They look just like real people, don't they? What do you think? Are you surprised, Naruhoku? Look at this. This is new track. Excellent. W w wax figures. Ah! Th come to think of it, I read this horror magazine once a long time ago. It said that if you preserve them right, dead bodies can transform into wax over time and keep forever without decaying. What is this? Uh, apparently it's called... Adipocure. Procure? Adipocure. I'm putting this in. I'm sorry. Adipocure. 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 The bro. Adam Rozak. I believe Madame Rozak. Oh, no, she's. No, she's still Rozak. Okay. Got it. I was looking through my book. Don't say scary stuff like that in such a shaky voice. First of all, I'm pretty sure Acti Pros. Acti isn't that easy to make. Plus. What is it this time? He screamed. Now that you mention it, I read this horror magazine once a long time ago. There was this old lady who put real dead bodies dipped in wax on display. Why don't you just try to forget reality for a little bit, okay, Naruhoku? <laughs> He did lose his job, but then he got it back, so now we're investigating a different crime scene or so. Uh, we're, we're trying to defend, uh, Benjamin Dirtpoor. <laughs> These are all just models. You're lying. You expect me to believe that? Huh? Look, no matter how you look at them, they're obviously real. And they're all such terrifying scenes. Uh, Holmes? What's wrong, Naruhoku? Um, nothing. It must be by imagination. <laughs> no, what is Holmes? <laughs> Holmes is definitely real. Oh, what the heck? Okay, this is this is spooky. Uh, this is really spooky. <laughs> There's a heavy curtain hanging right in the middle of the chamber of horrors. Wonder what's on the other side. Probably something scary. Oh, that? That's the famous separate room. There's a certain famous, terrifying serial killer inside. Do you want to pay the extra entry fee and have a look? What? So we have to pay even more money to get even more scared? Making that scary face at me isn't going to change anything. Is that an arm? Yeah, as far as I can see, it's an arm. Maybe one of the wax figures on display got broken. D don't tell me. Someone fell victim to one of these serial killers. D don't say such scary things. Naruhoto, she's ten. Stop scaring the ten-year-old. Is it a wax arm or a real arm? If you poke it with that pointer finger you're so proud of, you'll know right away. 
That's not what my pointer finger was made to be used for. Wait, what's... oh. This guy. I was like, what person? These figures are so well made that I can't be sure whether it's human or a wax figure. What if... All of them turn out to be human! And when the chime rings to signal the museum to close, they start moving all around! What is this, Toy Story? What a terrifying thought. Okay, I... Okay. See <laughs> helps? Hey, we can examine a ladder, but I don't think anything's gonna happen. Huh? What's that ladder doing here? Oh my god, this this is really a... <laughs> hmm? What's wrong? Oh, it's just that in my country, ladders that fold in two like this are considered step ladders. Oh yeah? Japanese can be weirdly specific sometimes, huh? Things like that can sow seeds of discord and end up causing arguments, you know? <laughs> A weighty warning, coming from an author. <laughs> so we do get our stepladder versus stepladder in here. I thought it was just gonna be shovel versus, uh, uh, shovel versus a stave? Was it, was it a stave? Is this person performing a western style suchikiri? Suchikiri. Kids want to look this up. Western style suchikiri. I've never even heard of that. It's that thing where a bad samurai just suddenly cuts down a townsperson. Sorry, I still don't know what you're talking about. But I feel like a samurai wax figure could be popular. Let's have them make one, Naruharoku. A wax figure doing sushikiri. I may have a katana, but I don't have any plans right now to cut anything with it. be a serial killer? Yeah, her name was Jane the Ripper, and she only went after young girls. The one with the knife must be the killer. Oh, well, yes, obviously. Ah! What's wrong, Nadahoda-kun? I've got it. I bet I know what she did. She probably bathed in a tub full of the blood of those young women. Placard here, but I don't see anything about the bathtub written on it. So the other one must have been Jack the Ripper. Huh? Oh wait, no, it is Jack the Ripper, because this is listed on here. <laughs> I guess the bathtub in the background doesn't have any special meaning. That's incredibly frustrating. <laughs> I like this the script says examine Sherlock statue with a question mark. Yeah, I would feel the same way too. Here's one I know. The great Sherlock Holmes. Looks like holmes -san finally got a wax figure made of himself. Well, he is a great detective who celebrated all around the world. Anyway, it's so well made that it's borderline creepy. Yeah, I'll say. Watch this, Narahodokun. I can kick him and he won't move a muscle. Oh my god. Oh! <laughs> hey, come on, don't kick it. <laughs> Wait. Huh? <laughs> Did that thing just moved? Like, a lot? <laughs> huh? What? 
Did it? Now that I look more closely... There's an oily sweat forming on the forehead of this wax figure. <laughs> Let's look at something else now, shall we, Iris-chan? Look, doesn't that serial killer figure over there look interesting? <laughs> Don't just run off like you saw something you shouldn't have! Homesan! I... I had a feeling it was real. Iris! Come on! You promised you'd keep the fact that I was going to be playing a temporary wax figure a secret! A... temporary wax figure? What the heck was that kick for? He almost ripped open my stomach! Well, Naruhoto-kun said he had something he wanted to ask you, so... Something you... wanted to ask me? Besides, I figure you must be dreadfully bored. So, we came to visit you. Well, that's true. If I had... If I had to have held that pose for another two minutes, this famous brain of mine would have hardened into wax. I'm glad we made it in time. In a sense, perhaps one could even say that you saved the world. Oh, good. Hopes he's back to his nonsensical self. Maybe Holmesan knows about what happened to Lord Baroque Van Zeke's past. In Lord Baroque Van Zeke's past. Alright then, pull up a seat then. I just happen to be in an incredibly chatty mood. Sorry, but we can't stay quite that long. If my eyes aren't deceiving me, a very interesting case is unfolding here at Adam Rosak's. Huh? And I get the feeling that that case... Has something to do with what you're here to ask me about. What is he talking about? Anyway, that'll have to wait, folks. I've got a job to do. He went back to being a wax figure, I guess. <laughs> sure. Not a Rosax. So, what the heck is this place? Apparently, Madame Rosac came here to London three years ago from France. And she opened the show tent last year. It's been incredibly popular ever since. We have show tents in Japan too, but this this place is nothing to laugh about. No matter how I look at them, they just look like real people. The art of making all inspiring wax figures is accomplished using a secret technique that's apparently been passed down through the, Rosa the Rosac family. Is Rashad the new name for me? She has another name up here. Uh, she put Rashad, and I keep seeing Rashad now. It's R-U-S-S-A-U-D. I'm not sure. I think my, tra my translator is not here with me right now, so I can't confirm. But I keep seeing this now instead of Rozak. So maybe that's actually the other name that she's using now. Yeah. All right, I'll stick with it, because it seems to be what we're working with here. And I skipped the line. It seems that they made a name of themselves by creating a wax figure of the queen who was executed via guillotine during the French Revolution. G guillotine Her incredibly lifelike expressions was replicated using a truly frightening method. Oh, did you drop a link? Sorry, the Nightbot doesn't like that. <laughs> Say they made a mold of her decapitated head. Right there at the guillotine. Immediately after her execution. Uh, immediately after her execution? That's terrifying. Well, it's one of the Rassad family legends. I don't know whether it's actually true. In any case, this museum displays wax figures of famous people from all around the world, but the most overwhelmingly popular among them are the ones in the Chamber of Horrors. Chamber of Horrors. There haven't been as many visitors lately, thanks to the London's World's Fair, but you can see horrific crimes from London's past, and the criminals who committed them displayed there. 
Well, the murderers themselves have pretty much all been executed, though. They're probably stiffer than the wax people like this right, right about now. <laughs> That's not funny. The masses love sensational things like this, even if they're in rather poor taste. So then, the scary scenes in this room... Yeah, they're all based on real-life crimes. That makes the atmosphere in here feel even more frigid. Well, I recommend not dwelling on it too much. He went back to being a wax figure. I guess? Temporary wax figure. So, what's this temporary wax figure thing you mentioned? Just what it looks like. I pose as a wax figure, arresting the serial killers here in the Chamber of Horrors. Uh, arresting? In about 30 minutes, I'll move over to where that serial killer wax figure is and change my pose. The visitors get a good look at us, and I'll shake their hands and stuff if they want. But wait! There's more! If they pay an extra shilling, they can even get their picture taken with us. When he says us, he must mean himself and the serial killers. But why on earth are you doing this in the first place? Ha! Huh, for money, of course! Homesan's shout echoed throughout the whole Chamber of Horrors. I'm worried about how I'll pay the rent this month, and I've got a hungry little Iris waiting at home for me. Oh, oh. I guess the fundings have been kind of low, considering, well, Naruhoto isn't actually working. But again, he doesn't get paid much. <laughs> I'm so hungry, Holmesy. So just know that if it comes to that, I'll be needing your help. Just... what the heck does he expect me to do? So bearing that in mind, how'd you like a photo taken? For a limited time only, I'll let you pose with whichever serial killer you want. I think I'll pass. Hmm. I won't forget this, Mr. Naruhodo. <laughs> and with his curse still hanging in the air, he went back to being a wax figure. I guess? But I wanted to ask you. So, what was it that you wanted to ask me? Actually, um... It's about Prosecutor Baroque Van Zeeks. Ah, rapey, huh? How is he? Well, I hope. I gave Hosan a full report about Prosecutor Van Zeeks and my client, Dr. Dirt Poor. And about Dr. Dirt Poor and Lord Van Zeeks knowing each other from their university days. So, about this huge case that changed Prosecutor Van Zeek's whole life. They're good, you might know about it, Holmesy. I think you told us before that you were at this museum investigating a case. And that case had something to do with what I wanted to ask you about. Sorry. Um, Homesan? You got really quiet all of a sudden. I see. It seems that this. Excuse me. Uh, hello. How long has she been? Everything about her just exudes an air of suspiciousness. Are you enjoying my museum? Hour? Um, home son? Do you know who this... He went back to being a wax figure. My name is Conette Rosad. I'm the owner of this museum. I know, right? This is slowly turning into Professor Layton versus Ace Attorney. What? So then, you're Madame Rosad? Yes. I may not look it, but I'm 26 this year. Well, that's pretty much the age I would have guessed. 
Wouldn't you agree that adding madam to my name makes me sound more distinguished? I guess. I'm awfully sorry for our... Uh, for the way our wax figure was acting just now. She must mean home son. He calls himself a famous detective, but he's incredibly restless. If he leaves his post again, I'll turn him into a real wax figure. <laughs> it doesn't sound like he's joking, or she's joking. For the time being, unfortunately. It doesn't seem like I'll be able to talk to Holmes-san. But remember what Holmes he said earlier. He's working on a case at this museum. Yeah, but... I'd like to hear more about that. It seems we've already got our hands full with our own case. I do like her design, though. The, the art of wax figures. So, did you make all the wax figures at this museum yourself? Yes, I'm the third generation of the family trade. Was she German or Russian? I missed what I missed that part again. I forgot what they said. Is she Russian or German? <laughs> or neither? Third generation? We've been making wax figures since my grandmother's time. During the turbulent era of the French Revolution, my grandmother ended up experiencing several misfortunes, but in the midst of that, she managed to discover true art. These wax figures really look like they could be alive. They might look even more lively than Holmesy, who's just pretending to be a wax figure. The ones displayed here are the fiends who caused all of London to quake with fear. And they were all made using molds, created right from the faces of the real criminals. Just after the executions. That's the secret to making them so real. To be honest, I think that's a pretty terrifying technique. I'm sure any path I might have taken would have ended in the same result. The pursuit of anything real is filled with the madness of some sort. Art is a mirror that reflects the times. We only make what the masses call for. Huh. Sounds like there's a lot more to the world of art than I realized. Please, don't worry. Huh? It's only in this room that such unfortunate wax figures are displayed. Please feel free to view the other rooms as well. Internationally renowned songtresses, popular actors, politicians. I'm sure you'll find something to enjoy. Now that she mentions it, I guess I came he straight here because Iris Chan dragged me in. Hmm, maybe it would have been better if we had a look at some of the other rooms too. The famous detective's wax figure. Um, about that one there. How did you end up with this arrangement? Ah, you mean the temporary wax figure. Actually, he came and sold himself to me a few days ago. What do you mean, he sold himself? That's creepy. Why not fill that empty space there with the wax figure of an internationally famous detective? Oh, something along those lines. Right. Naturally, Master Holmes is considered one of London's many famous figures, so... Just to warn you, he'll get mad if you don't refer to him as a famous detective. Personally, I'd been hoping to ask him anyway, but... Unfortunately, we weren't able to reach an agreement on the price of his contract. I bet that famous detective tried to demand a famous detective-sized price. Well, 500 pounds? I'll jump into a pool of boiling wax right here and now. No! Or something along those lines. Homesan, I think you came on a little too strong. But certain circumstances here at the museum has made us a bit tight on cash at the moment, so... For the time being, I'm having him work for me in this capacity. But did you really need to go this far? No, 
but the detective himself was quite adamant. As a matter of 50 shillings that I absolutely must have solved by tomorrow morning. What, a bet? Or something along those lines. <sighs> He's probably trying to buy something back from a pawn shop. The detective's businesses must not be going well right now. A case in progress. Come to think of it, may I ask you something? What might that be? Is there some sort of incident happening at this wax figure museum? Uh-uh. Who on earth told you that? Um, it was... That temporary wax figure over there who mentioned it. Uh-huh. He's gone. Wax figures are works of art. They shouldn't be used in business transactions. Of... Uh, Holmes-san! You left your post again. It seems that you're determined to become a real wax figure. Come now, Madame Rosard. I'm about to solve something more important. A problem more heated than that boiling wax you're holding. And I wouldn't recommend making more trouble for the police. But why would you... Madame Rosard's demeanor seems different suddenly. The better option would be to hire this famous detective for 50 shillings. And no, even better than that would be if you paid up front in cash. <laughs> Very well. Show me what you're capable of, master famous detective. Before I begin my deduction, there's something I'd like to confirm with you. What is behind that curtain at the back of the room? Oh, that's a special exhibit room. It costs an additional fee to go inside. Oh, the fact that its name contains the word special must mean that there's an especially frightening serial killer on display in there. Perhaps you wouldn't mind pulling back that curtain for a moment and letting me have a peek inside. I most certainly will not. There's nothing out of the ordinary back there. Nothing out of the ordinary? In that case... What's that wrist? Poking out from behind that curtain. Ah. I recommend just opening the curtain before things get out of hand. Get out of hand! There's a hand on the gr- uh. Alright then. I will now open the curtain. Just a little. A toll? I actually stole a peek in there earlier and... The depths of that special exhibit room is an impressive reproduction of a dreary cemetery. However, curiously enough, no matter how I searched the special exhibit room, I could find no sign of the serial killer's wax figure. Instead, I couldn't help noticing. What? This middle-aged man enjoying a nice faint on the floor. What? That's one of the jurors! That's like one of the jurors from the first game! So, in other words, Holmes-san, does that mean that middle-aged man lying on the floor is a t terrifying serial killer? No! That really is an unconscious middle-aged man. He's not even a wax figure. Huh? No matter how well it's made, a wax figure could never actually be mistaken for a human being. Now, I've come to a conclusion. Two of them, in fact. The first one is this. There is an incredibly huge business transaction taking place in the special exhibit room. What? And the other is this. That transaction has something to do with a major crime. 
Madame Rosad's face has gone as pale as wax. D dear God. Now then, as you requested, Madame Rosad. Allow me to show you the prowess of this great and famous detective turned temporary wax figure. Fantastic. Okay, the disappearance of the wax figure. What on earth is happening here at this wax museum? I love how he's still trying to be a wax figure doing this. The answer is indicated by the stack of bills peering cutely from your purse. As far as I can tell, you appear to have around 200 pounds there. Th this is my money. So then, what is the meaning behind that huge sum of money? The direction of your gaze is incredibly honest, Madame Rosal. The thing it's aimed at is our answer. The meaning behind that 200 pounds is indicated by this placard. Wax figure for sale. Huh, it seems that business isn't going so well these days. In other words, you. So that special... Sold that serial killer to us in the special exhibit room for 200 pounds. Uh huh? Now then, let's investigate the next question at hand. Just who is this middle-aged man enjoying a good faint here? It would appear that the man was dealt quite a terrible blow. You wouldn't happen to know what it was what it was that made him pass out, would you? Unfortunately, it seems you're not very good at hiding things. The thing that dealt that man the blow was at 200 pounds. No. Oh. <laughs> Apparently, you had that man completely wrapped around your little finger. What are you trying? What are you implying? That man was made to buy that wax figure for 200 pounds. The moment he forked over the cash, the size of the sum suddenly hit him. However, he couldn't get his 200 pounds back. And it was that realization that left him in that state. You saw the serial killer in that room for an incredible sum. I pray that the dreams that man is having right now are at least sweet ones. The disappearance of the wax figure. Or, sorry, it was sold, the conclusion. The location of the wax figure. Now then, we must now ask where did the wax figure in question go? Let us consider that question next. How can you... The thing that catches my attention at this point are the folks standing over there. Just who is that man? The answer can be found in the scarf around his neck, of course. That scarf is code used between Scotland Yard officers to notify each other that there is a crime in progress. That young... That youth is a plainclothes detective. He's currently investigating this museum. I know him well. That's a police sergeant, John Clay, isn't it? John Clay. Uh, yes. He's made quite the name for himself after winning the Superintendent General Award three times last year. I recognized him at once. Well... Now then, let us direct our attention to the sinister looking old man sitting near him. He hasn't moved a muscle this whole time. Almost as if he's a wax figure. Oh. Well... I thought so. You reacted to my words just now, madam. The moment I laid eyes on him, I noticed it. This tag. Whether or not this old man is a wax figure is indicated by this price tag. Three pence. What a pitifully low price he's been given. What the heck? But I suppose that's the best you can get on for an old wax figure full of cracks. And you sold him to that odd bird of a man for 200 pounds. And it was that spurred Scotland Yard, and that's what sp spurred Scotland Yard into action, madam. But... The wax figure has already been recovered and is now in possession of the police. I'd like to return that elderly wax figure to the cemetery where he belongs. 
the wax figure was already found. What does this have to do with anything that we're doing right now? What? And this has been Sherlock Holmes' famous deduction. End me. End me. Nani. <laughs> You all seem to be shocked into silence, folks. Ah, uh, I mean... That wax she's got is boiling with a pretty threatening, threatening vigor. Um, Holmesan, can I ask you something? Oh ho! Got a question for me again this time, have you? Well, fire away! The fact that that old police officer was being displayed in the special exhibit room would have to mean that he's an especially terrifying serial killer, right? The murderous officer, Automol. Automol? Automol. Huh? Last year, a string of mysterious murders occurred that had all of London quaking in its boots. As soon as officers would arrive on each new crime scene, the killer would vanish like a puff of smoke in the, oil in the wind. The killer actually turned out to be a patrol officer, Sergeant Ardemore. And that's who this grumpy looking old guy is? Otter, like, like the animal otter. Indeed. You can tell just by looking at that terrifying, sinister-looking face of his. If my memory isn't mistaken, that's exactly what he looked like. Anyway, is 200 pounds really that much money? Well, for that amount, you could probably afford the newest model of steam-powered car. Th that's... I guess it must be a lot then. Any more words? Before I turn you into a wax figure, that is. Bubbling of the madam's wax is looking more threatening by the seconds. That wax even smells dangerous. Well, I mean, he basically called her a criminal to her face. It looks like I have no choice but to ask you to lend me a hand this time, Iris Chan. Whoa! Right, we don't have Susana with us. Homestar's deduction needs some help. Of course. Leave it to me. This is so weird. Well, let's get right to it then. Quickly, before Madame Rasad lets that stuff fly. I was waiting for you to say that, folks. Now then, as you requested, Madame Rasad, allow me to show you the prowess of this great and famous detective turned temporary wax figure. This is cool! Iris is gonna help us. What on earth happened? Oh, wait. The disappearance of the wax figure. Here we go. What on earth is happening here at this wax museum? The answer is indicated by the stack of bills peering cutely from your purse. As far as I can tell, you appear to have 200 pounds there. This is my money. So then what is the meaning behind that huge sum of money? The direction of your gaze is incredibly honest, Madame Rassad. The thing it's aimed at is our answer. The meaning behind that 200 pounds is indicated by this placard. It's true, the Madame glanced toward the wall just now. But can you really sell a wax figure for 200 pounds? Huh? I mean, I'm sure she pulled her heart and soul into making it. It's probably really important to her. I don't think I sell something like that no matter how much money I was offered. I guess the fact that I'd probably sell it right away makes me a corrupted adult. <laughs> anyway, it looks like there might be another meaning behind the madam's 200 pounds. Let's check the direction of her gaze one more time. This guy looks like he's alive. As far as I can tell by looking, he doesn't seem to be a wax figure or a serial killer. Huh. I'm sure I sure wouldn't pay 200 pounds for him. I don't think this guy's for sale anyway. He's in the way of the visitors trying to get through, lying there. I doubt someone put him there on purpose.
there's a sign pinned here. Let's see, what does it say? To Conet Rosad, proprietor of Madame Rosad's Wax Museum. We'll be taking the prisoner from this room. You want him back, it'll cost you 200 pounds. Have the money ready by noon on October 23rd. What? This almost sounds like one of those letters they demand money with like you see in kidnapping cases. It's like a ransom note. Ransom note? Now it's been updated. <laughs> behind that 200 pounds is indicated by this ransom note. Right! It takes a rather comical criminal to kidnap a wax figure. No! Either way, I'm surprised you were able to prepare 200 pounds in such short notice. Notice. That wax figure was special. I had to scrap together all my resources. In other words, you gathered together that 200 pounds as ransom. Now then, let's investigate the next question at hand. Just who is this middle-aged man enjoying a good faint here? It would appear that that man was dealt, dealt a terrible blow. You wouldn't happen to know what it was that made him pass out, would you? Uh. Unfortunately, it seems you're not very good at hiding things. The thing that dealt the man the blow was at 200 pounds. So, what's the deal with this old guy, then? I think we should ask the man himself when he wakes up. Let's try to preserve the artfulness of this deduction. Yeah, I guess you're right. Holmesy worked hard on it. <laughs> Clearly this man really did sustain some sort of blow. What's the man I'm trying to hide? Let's take another look. That's quite a braid. Wow, Rasad-san's hair is really long. You can't tell from the front, can you? Her braid kind of looks like it could be used as a whip. I bet it could knock that middle-aged man flat with one crack. Uh, I don't think it's quite capable of that. So she's willing to pay a giant amount of cash like that just to get her wax figure back? Just to get her wax figure back, huh? I wonder what kind of serial killer it was of. Oh wait, that was Iris, my bad. I don't know what to say about the fact that the only answer here is a serial killer. Well, either way, I guess that would mean that middle-aged man has nothing to do with it. We might as well let him have a good rest. the madam's right hand. I guess it must be. We can see her left hand pretty clearly. But if you look at it closely, this is actually a left hand too. Oh. I, I wish you wouldn't say scary stuff like that, Iris Chan. Plus his hand looks kind of stiff. Maybe more like rock solid. Rock solid? Wait, no way. Would it belong to a wax figure? <laughs> the thing that dealt the blow to that middle-aged man was that wax figure's arm. But it's simply, he was probably whacked with that rock-solid arm. I don't know what you're talking about. Regarding that hand peeking out from behind your back, logically, it should be your right hand. But if you look closely, it's actually a left hand. Oh. Not only that, but it appears to belong to a man, and it's hard as a rock. In other words, that's not your arm. It belongs to a wax figure. <laughs> oh, that's creepy. We get them sometimes. Incredibly rowdy visitors, I mean. They get too wild and end up damaging the wax figures. 
So you mean that arm? Yes, this gentleman plucked it off as a keepsake. That's a rather audacious choice of a souvenir, isn't it? It reminds me of people who snap off cherry blossom branches when they go flower viewing. So I was decisive and took the necessary measures. So you cornered the man, stole back the arm, and whacked him with it. And that was what left him in that state. But regardless of the end the end the man came to, it seems we've arrived at our conclusion. It would seem that the serial killer was kidnapped from the special exhibit room. I take the I take it though. Uh, the new conclusion is, is it was kidnapped. Topic 2, the location of the wax figure. Not with the police, obviously. Now then, we must now ask, where did the wax figure in question go? Let us consider that question next. How can you... The thing that catches my attention at this point are the folks standing over there. Just who is that man? The answer can be found. In the scarf around his neck, of course. According to Holmesan, this is code used to warn fellow officers that a crime is in progress. Apparently, it's a way of contacting backup when they don't want to reveal themselves. It's a secret code just for detectives. Holmesan just blabbed the secret, though. Well, exposing secrets is a detective's job, after all. Anyway, judging by imagine. Judging by Madame Rossad's reaction, there might be other hints that reveal his identity. Oh! Hello! L look! The end of the metal rod is sticking out of his shoulder! I guess it goes without saying, then. This guy isn't a real person. It looks like his whole arm, including the sleeve, was ripped off at the shoulder. Ripped off arm, huh? Just heard something like that. <laughs> Who is he? The thing that indicates that is the shoulder rod, of course. No human has bones like that, I can guarantee you that. Oh wow, I like this is This is cute. Hold on, I need a picture. Oh, I don't know why the volume went up. That's cute! So uh, Sherlock and Naruhold alert pointing in the same direction. That's cute. <laughs> I'm saving that picture. Which means that the young plainclothes detective, John Clay, standing before us. And a truly surprising turn of events is in fact a wax figure. You were the one who declared him human, Holmesan. <laughs> after all, he became a celebrity after winning the Superintendent General Awards three times last year. Or had the wax figure made of him right away. That's the natural thing to do! What else is there to say? Well, the arm that man plucked off belonged to this detective. Now, let us direct our attention to the sinister looking old man sitting, uh, sitting, sitting, sitting near him. I had a thing pop up. He hasn't moved a muscle this whole time. Almost as if he's a wax figure. Oh, uh, well. Is he really the wax figure now? I'm, I'm thinking he's not now. I thought so. You reacted to my words just now, madam. The moment I laid eyes on him, I noticed it. This tag. Whether or not this old man is a wax figure is indicated by this price tag. Or three pence, what a pitifully low price he's been given. The murderous officer, Audible. Did I get that right? Is he famous? The papers talk about him all the time last year. I don't know what he looked like, though. But anyway, three pence seems super cheap, doesn't it? 
That's what gas costs at Garrett's lodging house. A special serial killer kidnapped from the special exhibit room, huh? A special wax figure that a kidnapper could demand a sum like 200 pounds for. Would that really be the murderer's officer, Ottermole? Let's have one last good look around. Hi! Hello! What is this? This is like Apollo Justice all of a sudden. We're perceiving things. Th this old man's leg. It's bouncing like crazy. But he seems to be asleep. So then, it's not that he's consciously bouncing it. It must be a muscle spasm. Either way, wax figures don't bounce their legs. I'll oh, have muscle spasms. Now that I look at this old guy more closely, he has a familiar looking scarf tied around his arm. Okay. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Whether or not this old man is a wax figure is indicated by this twitching leg. A wax figure can't twitch his leg no matter how well made it is. Which means... That this high quality old man is a real Scotland Yard officer. You started treating him completely differently when you, than you were earlier. Well, what do you have to say for yourself, Madame Rossad? What do you mean, well? I'm the one who conducted the police, who contacted the police and got that old man to come here. But he seems awfully worn out. He's fast asleep. Um, so what about this three pence price tag then? He must have forgotten to cut the tag off the scarf he bought at the flea market. And do you remember this scarf, Mr. Narodo? Yes. It's code to let other officers know that a crime is in progress, right? Yes, it's true. A crime has occurred. This does the good detective notice right off the bat when he began his deduction. It would seem that we've arrived at last at our answer. A special serial killer wax figure was kidnapped from the special exhibit room. And, Scotland Yards is already in the midst of investigating it, but... Missing wax figures whereabout is, are still unknown. This has been Sherlock Holmes' famous deduction. Yes. <laughs> sure. <laughs> the wax figure kidnapping is still being investigated. Men and women, young and old, the occasional gentleman who drops by on his way home from the pub. I get all sorts of visitors. However, visitors who dare cause harm to my wax figures. I absolutely refuse to let them off easily. But that's, but setting that aside. So that was one of the most, one of those famous deductions I've heard so much about. It was quite moving. She seems happy. The pleasure is all mine. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Well, I suppose that middle-aged man will wake up in due time and head home. More importantly, what I'm curious about is, was the wax figure on display in that room truly kidnapped? Yes, it certainly was. If you wouldn't mind, perhaps you could tell me more about that. About the wax figures kidnapping, I mean. Very well. However, you will return to your post at once as soon as I've finished. This great detective is wasted as a wax figure, if you ask me. Bless. Okay, uh, I'm gonna take a little break.
uh, five minute break and then I'll come back and continue this and we'll see how much more we got here. Oh. Oh boy, this is gonna be a fun... Hmm. Actually, maybe I'll... Let's see if I can continue this. We're very close to finishing up the investigation, so let's see if I can finish this. And then I'll take a break. The kidnapping of the wax figure. So, what do you mean when you say the wax figure was kidnapped? It happened a few days ago. I arrived at the museum in the morning and I noticed that the wax figure that vanished from the special exhibit room. The special exhibit room, huh? So that's why the curtain was closed. And then I found the ransom note. So the thief must have snuck in during the night and stolen the figure then. The stolen wax figure was probably of another bad. Oh, uh, duh, no. The stolen wax figure was probably of another bad guy, right? He was an extraordinarily bad guy. You see, it was none other than the man who carved his name indelibly into British criminal history. The Professor. I can't help thinking of Professor Layton when he sees this. I've never heard of the guy. It appears that everything has finally come together. Wouldn't you say, Mr. Nottaholdo? Huh? The professor? He was active around the time that I was born, right? Yeah, that's right, Iris. It was ten years ago. That serial killer had all of London quaking in his boots. Ten years ago. Yes, it was just around the time that Baroque Van Zeeks graduated from London University. Huh? No way. So the huge case that completely changed Reapy's life was... That's right. It was the Professor's case. The Professor. So who the heck was he? The Professor. Was he a man of puzzles? <laughs> Ten years ago, a series of cruel serial murders set the great British Empire trembling. The killer was arrested after killing five people and executed. And now he's been turned into a wax figure to entertain the people of London. Well, he apparently ended up being kidnapped and isn't around today, unfortunately. But you get the picture. So then, what does that have to do with, with Prosecutor Van Zeeks? How was it that the professor managed to carve his name into British crime history? It's because his choice of victim spurred the British government into action. The victims? The ones who, ki who he killed were the elite, members of the prestigious noble families. Some of them even had ties to the royal family. That was enough to get even the government shaken. Nobles? Uh, oh, wait a second. I think Dr. Dirtpoor told us this earlier, that Lord Van Zeeks came from a powerful noble family. It was the fifth murder that ended up leading to the professor's arrest. In the name of the young noble who acted as his final victim it was Klimt Van Zeeks. Oh, this is a Klimp, Klimp, Klimp. Klimt? You know what? The book calls him Krimit, but honestly. I hate that. It's a terrible, it's a terrible romanization. Let me, let me, let me spell out what it is. Klimp Van Zeeks. Kermit. Yes, Kermit. Uh, I'm not even, I'm not even kidding. Let me get, let me spell this, this messed up name out. Man, this is, this is even better than, uh, Rupert, Roberto Kralgri from the first game. <laughs> let me see. All right, there we go. Uh, this is so bad. Krimit, 
<laughs> I'm calling him Klimp and you, Clint, Klimp. How do even I pro how do I even pronounce Clint? I don't I don't even like uh it. Uh, it. Okay, it's spelled like this in the book. <laughs> Climit. Limit. I am. It, um, I don't know how I'm gonna be able to pronounce this. Climit. I'm gonna say Climit. Climit. Plim. <sighs> I'm gonna have a hard time saying this. It's with or without the right spelling. What? V Van Zeeks. I'll leave the rest to your imagination. A younger brother, whose older brother was stolen from him by that serial killer, ended up pursuing pr prosecuting after that. Klimp. Clint. See, Krimit and Klimp both don't sound great. <laughs> Klimp. 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 Uh, it ended up being- it ended up becoming known far and wide by the name Grim Reaper. I had no idea that Lord Baroque Van Zeeks had a past like that. Now then, I believe that's about all I can tell you. After all, right now I'm... Supposed to be a temporary wax figure. In that case, I need to be going as well. Uh, thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Lift! I hope this is who it is. I didn't expect you to go out of your way to come see me. Ah, oh, yes! Okay, I was right. Okay. I was making sure this is still the right dialogue. It's been so long. I'm so glad to see you again, Baroque. It's been ten years, hasn't it? I didn't expect to see you again like this. I can't forgive myself for what happened to Mr. Kingsley. I never dreamed that something like that would... Your trial is tomorrow. Oh, yes. Got a young Oriental lawyer. He's a trustworthy chap. It was all just an unfortunate accident. He'll definitely prove that. In regards to that. Oh, yeah, I heard. You're going to be the prosecutor. I see. Actually, I heard something after returning to this country. Baroque, I heard that I'm in the trials you prosecute. Spit it out. I... Uh, no, never mind. I know you're only thinking of me here. This is none other than the trial of a close friend. I couldn't leave it to anyone else. Yes, I know. I'll be counting on you tomorrow, Baroque. Well then, I will be seeing you tomorrow in court. Oh, what a, what, what a scene. Thanks. That was fantastic. Thanks. Thanks so much. Thanks for that. Wow. 